morning and happy Sunday. I feel like I need to sing this song. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date because I'm a little bit late. Um, I was going to go outside because I like it out there. But I didn't want the distractions because I haven't fed yet. I haven't fed this morning. So if I go out there, the pigs are going to be all crazy because they're going to hear me. The chickens are going to come flock me. The dogs are running around and I hear the cat meowing. So I still have chores to do and I've been up since five, y'all. Isn't that crazy? So Patrick's in the woods this morning. He's hunting. I believe I'm going to go with him this evening. We're going to go camp somewhere. This is his only night off. So we'll do service at church this morning. And then I told him I'd sacrifice and I'm not going to go this evening and I'll go hunting with you. So welcome guys. Um, I'm going to try to resume this. Um, I haven't done this in a while and I'm trying to get back into a groove. And you guys know when you get out of sync with something, it's so hard to get right back in and do it. So for a couple of years, probably two and a half years, I did this every day on Facebook. And I um, had created a group and I had viewers come on every morning, faithful viewers come on every morning and we studied the Bible, life of Jesus, Acts, all the, like the New Testament up to now. And there's just... There's drama everywhere, but I got discouraged because, you know, with every little setting, you know, um, you encounter some type of drama. And it was just more like these people didn't want this person, you know, they didn't want to be in the group with this person or thought I should remove this person or do this and that. And my heart was aggrieved by it and it distracted me and it discouraged me. So I decided to move it over here. I tried that for a while. I didn't have the viewers that I had on Facebook, which discouraged me. But the Lord's really been telling me, you know, teaching me that even if someone doesn't come on and watch this, even if someone doesn't want to be in your study, he's growing me spiritually, even by me doing this. So I'm trying to get everything that's up here <laughs> out to you guys, because I want to grow with you. I want us to grow together. And even if like, I don't have the viewers that I had on Facebook, it's not about that. It's about the spiritual growth. It's about understanding the word so that we can understand the Lord at a deeper level. That's what it's about. So um, I'm going to try to do this. And not every day like I used to, but on Sundays, that's going to be my devotion day, which it was for a long time. And I'm going to try to jump back in, guys. And I had stopped at Hebrews 6. So today we're going to do Hebrews 7. And I'm going to try to go not at a too rapid pace, but kind of at a fast pace because there's so much and I don't want to drag this out past the 30 minute mark. Um, I want to keep it within that to respect other people's time. So, and those of you on replay, those that want to come back and watch it on replay. So that there's that like limit and it's not like an hour, two hours long. Um, in a private setting, it could go that far. But when you're on video, you know, if you just want to put it down and listen, you don't want to watch. I do that a lot when I listen to Bible studies or devotions and they're pretty lengthy. I will just let them play as I work. And that's totally fine. Um, if you're on and you're just listening and you're not want, wanting to interact, that's totally fine. But if you're here and you want me to know you're here, wave at me. Do something to let me know you're here. So <sighs> I have all my notes. And at the top of this, I put, why is it taking me so long to finish Hebrews? That was what I asked the Lord. And he answered me. I got distracted. I let drama distract me. I, I let myself distract me. I let views, viewers, the lack of distract me when it's not even about me. It's about the word. It's about our growth. So I have to learn not to be selfish in a way. He's teaching me that I'm a little bit selfish in myself. And I'm not giving my full self to him like I should be because I want it to be more about myself. Um, and he's really teaching me that. Hello, Dana. Thank you for letting me know you're here. So um, I know there are other people that do live streams on Sundays. So if you can't watch mine live, that's fine. Um, I'm not trying to come in and steal people. I'm just letting you know a little bit of history of where I came from and the transition that I came from 
and the distraction that happened and my walk with the Lord got a little stumbly because I was really doubting myself but in my heart I knew he put the word and to teach the word I knew it was in my heart to do that evangelism and teaching and um, just leaning from the word so let's go ahead and get started guys I'm gonna not like take up a whole bunch of time I want to keep it within my limits so with every good like with every good study there has to be a little bit of historic background so this is where we're gonna start guys we have to start um, way back in Genesis guys we have to talk about this so this is where I'm gonna kinda just read through it so you guys can see and grasp it before we even start Hebrew 7 we have to do this first so um, the history um, of Abraham who was Abram he was Abram at this time and Melchizedek way back in Genesis 13 and 14 so um, Abram or Abraham and his nephew Lot they left Canaan and after uh, they left Canaan after a famine had hit the land and they both had become wealthy uh, they were wealthy in livestock and other things but a dispute happened between Abram and Lot and so Abraham or Abram had told Lot to choose which countryside he wanted. Lot chose the Jordan Valley that is near Sodom. So after this, a war had broke out among the kings and invaders invaded Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot was captured and everything he had was stolen, was taken from him when he was captured. So when Abram had heard about this, when he heard his nephew Lot um, had been captured, he assembled his men and they went and rescued Lot and they took back all his possessions. So after Abram returned, he was met by Melchizedek, who is king of Salem. And what is so interesting about Salem is it's the ancient name for the city of Jerusalem. Look at that last part. I don't know if it's on the screen. It might not be here, but Jerusalem. The last part is Salem, Jerusalem. So Melchizedek was also the priest of the Most High God, our Father God. And Melchizedek blessed Abram. And Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of what he had recovered, which was a tithe. So that is just a little bit of history, guys, before we even get started. So that as we read this, you're going to know a little bit of the backstory. From Genesis 13 and 14 so that it's like it'll open up your mind to be like oh wow that's so cool I thought that was so cool so I'm gonna try to get this out the best that I can from my notes so that you guys can just soak this in today think about it and um, it's gonna bless you it blessed me it blessed me big time so here we go guys Hebrews 7 this Melchizedek was king of the city of Salem and also a priest of God Most High when Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against the kings, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Then Abram took, Abraham took a tenth of all he had captured in battle and gave it to, Melch to Melchizedek. The name Melchizedek means king of justice, and king of Salem means king of peace. There is no record of his father or mother or any of his ancestors, no beginning or end to his life. He remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. And we know who the Son of God is. It's Jesus Christ, right? So reading on. Consider then how this great Melchizedek was. Even Abraham, the great patriarch of Israel, recognized this by giving him a tenth of what he had taken in battle. Now the law of Moses required that the priest who are descendants of Levi must collect a tithe from the rest of the people of Israel who are also descendants of Abraham. But Melchizedek, who was not a descendant of Levi, collected a tenth from Abraham. The, and Melchizedek placed a blessing upon Abraham, the one who had already received the promises of God. And without question, the person who has the power to give a blessing is greater than the one who is blessed. Just soak that in a minute. 
Sometimes we are the receivers of a blessing and sometimes we are the givers of, of the blessing, right? So just take that in. The priests who collect tithes are men who die. So Melchizedek is greater than they are because we are told that he lives on. In addition, we might even say that these Levites, the ones who collect the tithe, paid a tithe to Melchizedek when their ancestor Abraham paid a tithe to him. For although Levi wasn't born yet, the seed from which he came was in Abraham's body when Melchizedek collected the tithe from him. So I'm going to try to talk about this a minute and just point out some highlights before we move on. And um, I'm going to try to read from my notes. So at the time when Abram gave the tenth that he recovered, Levi was not born. But the seed of Levi was in Abraham. Levi, his, his birth starts in uh, Genesis 29, about 31 through 35. His mother is Leah. Remember Rachel and Leah from the Old Testament. His father is Jacob, the tribe of Levi. So he is the tribe of Levi, the Levites. Okay, so if you know a little bit of history, which see, this is where we could DV off, but we're not. Guys, don't get scared. We're not. We're going to stay true to this, just this word. But it's the Levites. So that's, that's this tribe. The law of Moses required the priest who are descendants of Levi to collect the tithe from Israel. But Melchizedek, who has no father, has no mother, no genealogy, was not a descendant of Levi. So let's say Melchizedek, they were not required. Abraham was not required to give him a tithe. This is even before Levi was born, but his seed was in Abraham. But Abraham voluntarily gave tithes to Melchizedek. This act of giving by Abraham is greater than all of Israel's payment of tithes because it, because it is required by Moses. Abraham gave willingly and voluntarily. So this is my devotion to myself on this part. When we give to God of our own free will, it is much greater um, it is a much greater offering than when we give because we have to, whether that be our money, our time, our worship. So our willingness to love God and give back to God or his people is much greater than us having to do it because we're required to or because we're asked to or because it's just the thing we do. Um, hey. Surprise. So that was the devotion for myself. Hi, Lois. Good morning. Um, so I want you to take that in because it's so good. That's just a really good little devotion in this. So let's move on. So if the priesthood of Levi, on which the law was based, could have achieved the perfection God intended, why did God need to establish a different priesthood with the priest in the order of Melchizedek instead of the order of Levi and Aaron? And if the priesthood is changed, the law must also be changed to permit it. For the priest we were talking about belongs to a different tribe whose members have never served at the altar as priest. What I mean is our Lord came from the tribe of Judah and Moses never mentions priests coming from that tribe. Let's talk about the tribe of Judah. Let's talk about the tribe of Judah. So, um, I need to stay with my notes. I'm so excited inside. Under the law of Moses, God commanded that only those from the family of Aaron could serve at the altar in sacrifice. The tribe of Judah is the tribe of Jesus' lineage. Okay, just take, take that in. The tribe of Judah had nothing to do with Aaron's priesthood or the law of Moses. So, Let's reference here to Matthew 5. This is what Jesus said. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an ayat or it's in different translations is different things. Not a dot will pass from the law until it is accomplished. So Jesus came 
not to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. That's what he did for us. He came to fulfill the law for us. He is our high priest. He offered his life as our sacrifice. So Jesus is now able to save forever. It is all, it is all accomplished. It will all be accomplished. He forever intercedes with God on our behalf. And I'm getting ahead because we need to read on. Okay. This change has been made very clear since a different priest who is like Melchizedek has appeared. Jesus became a priest not by meeting the physical requirements of, of belonging to the tribe of Levi, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. And the psalmist pointed this out when he prophesied, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Yes, the old requirement about the priesthood was set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law never made anything perfect. But now we have confidence in a better hope through which we draw near to God. This new system was established with a solemn oath. Aaron's descendants became priests without such an oath. But there was an oath regarding Jesus. For God said to him, the Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vow. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus is the one who guarantees this better covenant with God. There were many priests under the old system, for death prevented them from remaining in office. But because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lasts forever. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on our behalf. He is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless, unsustained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. Unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. He does not need to offer he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this for their own sins first. And then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this once for all when he offered himself as the sacrifice for the people's sins. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weakness. But after the law was given, God appointed his son with an oath. And his son has been made the perfect high priest forever. Guys, Jesus, forever. So that is our study today. Um, <clears throat> the, the meaning portrayed even way back in the beginning with, with Genesis foreshadows and foretells about the coming of Jesus. So when you put it all together, and, and I think we even studied about Melchizedek in Hebrews 5. I can't remember, guys. You have to go back and read that. It points to Jesus Christ. And as we know, like, in the law, the high priests were the only ones who could go before the Lord. And they had to be holy without blame or they would die. But Jesus, who is without sin, he is holy and pure, is our high priest forever who intercedes for us at the throne of God forever and ever and ever, guys. I think that I just, I love this story and... Um, if we can grasp like even the offering part, doing it willingly, Abraham did not have to give to Melchizedek way back before the law was even established. He didn't have to, but he knew there was something about this Melchizedek and he gave willingly. He already had the promises of God, but then Melchizedek blessed him, blessed him. I just, it's such a great story, guys. So um, we need to just think about not, we can't go another moment. We can't go another moment without laying our lives down at the feet of Jesus, surrendering ourselves to him and letting him be our king. We need it so desperately right now. I'm not going to talk election. I'm not going to talk that stuff. But we really need King Jesus in our lives in this moment. It's so crucial. So if you're watching this and you don't know him, I pray you seek him out. Seek him out. Let him be your savior because he will cover you, protect you, intercede for you. And he's going to get us through all this mess. No matter what, he's going to get us through all this mess. So good morning, sister. I'm going to pray us out. 
And um, I'm glad you guys come on with me this morning. And I hope you guys have a blessed and beautiful Sunday. Um, we are going to be live Tuesday, me and Patrick together, um, about noon. We are going to be, I'm going to be celebrating his birthday for him. And Lois has a birthday the same day. So I was like, can I shout you out? <laughs> Um, so we're going to have cake and I just want to, you know, honor him on his, it's the day before his birthday, but just, you know, anyway. So I hope you guys will join us on Tuesday at noon if you can. If you can't, maybe you can catch the replay, but, um, I'm going to pray us out. I, I did it. I got done before nine o'clock, so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to get myself ready, continue getting ready for church, get my children's church stuff fixed, ready to go. And, um. Pray for us, guys. We're going to go camping tonight <laughs> in the deer woods in God's beautiful creation. So I hope we I hope we get some good footage for you guys. Okay, enough of that. Father, I thank you for this word. And um, Lord, I thank you for sending Jesus to fulfill everything, Father. The law, and he's our high priest. And Father, he's doing it. He did everything that we and ourselves cannot do. But Father, I just pray blessings over those that are watching today. Father, those that need a touch from you, that need a healing from you, that need a financial breakthrough from you, Father, that just need answered prayers, Father, or confirmation. I just pray that you'll do that today, that you make yourself real and known in our lives today, Father, that your evidence of your glory and your creation, Father, just the evidence of you is surrounding us. Father, I pray that we continue to acknowledge you and that we cast fear aside, Father, through all the things that are going on right now, Father, and we look to you, Father, for our answers, and we look to you for our peace in our circumstances, Father, and then I pray, Lord, that the right king will be appointed over our land. The right king be appointed over our land, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you are true and your word is true and your covenant is forever standing with us. And I thank you, Father, that we can call you Father God, Abba Father. I thank you for that privilege, Lord, and that right through Jesus Christ. So I praise you, Father, today. I thank you for your many blessings. Walk with us today, Jesus. Amen. Bye, guys. I'm going to go check and see what Patrick